Hello, welcome to Painting by Letters. My name is Hannes, and we're going to continue the process of fixing my Necrons. Last time, we tried to find a new colour of green to fix the overall look, and I wasn't impressed with the initial results. The blue, however, that was included as a new addition was much, much better. So the blue is a coat of Vallejo light blue and a cover in Achelian green gave this wonderfully vibrant result. And it's quite nicely matte as well, so it looks really quite powerful. If we compare it to the Necron Colors Games Workshop puts out, I actually don't think it's that far off. It's created a nice transition of color between the different blues. It's not going to work on flatter panels, but we can mix some white into the base coats to handle that and to punch some edge highlights or vibrancy in at that point. The Vallejo greens that I have, however, did not achieve the results I was after. The effect was a mix between camo green and to be honest, I thought it was a bit too putrid. I suspect some of the issues might be related to the gloss finish that these Vallejo paints seem to have. So I thought we might need to try A, a matter paint of some kind, and B, a wider range of greens to mix with and to create something with. Thus, I went down to Travelling Man in Newcastle to see what they had. I'll be honest with you, I walked in thinking about buying something else, and when I got there, I realised they only had Games Workshop paints in a large enough range. They did have a stand of two thin coats and some ink paints as well, but in both cases they'd completely sold out of the greens. So Games Workshop it was. Here we go. <sighs> so I'm not a fan of these things. The paint pots don't seal well and then they dry. You can't drip them onto a palette, meaning particularly for myself, I often struggle to mix with them as easily. To be honest, it's just annoying. They're also a bit pricey for what you get. Um, you get about 12 mil of paint, I believe, whereas in the Vallejos, which are cheaper, you get about 17 mils of paint. However, I decided, given my situation, that we should give them a bit of a go. So I tried to get some complementary colors. I ended up with Warboss Green, Warpstone Green, and Moot Green. Herein lies another problem with GW Paints, the names. I mean, if I were to give you the names Warboss, Warpstone, and Moot, and say that they were all green related, unless you've used these paints before, I'm gonna guess you probably don't know what kind of green that is. But I'm complaining enough, aren't I? So, we've got these three new greens, and the previous blue recipe that I already liked. We then need to begin the process of fixing the rest of the army. I thus tried to consider how to tackle around about a thousand points, I think, and I decided that we'd start with the larger models first. It seemed like the best test of the greens in particular, so I picked out the Scorpec Destroyers and Lord, some Wraiths, my Stalker and my Overlord. Once picked, I set about beginning the work. So as normal, I began setting up my table and thinking about the effect I was going for. So initially I started with Warpstone Glow as the base colour. I mixed in a bit of water just so that it wasn't too thick. One of the things that I'm thinking about is the fact that I'm painting over other paints. I know that's not ideal, but given that I quite like some of the other elements of these models, and I'd like to have some free time this month. I don't particularly wish to repaint all of them from scratch. Plus, like, if we look at this uh, Scorpec Lord here, I think the reds are really nice. Some of the other blues are quite nice as well. So I just thought I'd paint over other paints. Problem there is we could end up losing some detail. So the paints had to be really, really well thinned, which I did first. Um, and started working through, slowly but surely, adding this green. We can see here, now we've cut forward ever so slightly, that that green is beginning to pull through. I think it's actually a really, really nice colour. It's got a bit of warmth to it, 
um, and it seems to really offset more of the kind of colder metallic colors that the rest of the Necrons have. I'm a really big fan of this green. At this point, I decided to move towards the Warboss green color. It's a bit lighter and it's a bit more washed out, so I thought it might work quite well as sort of a soft differentiation over the green below. Now what I'm doing here is I'm mixing in actually a pretty decent amount of water into this paint. It's a bit hard to tell on the camera, but it ended up a bit closer to a glaze. Um, at first on this little guy here, it didn't quite work as intended. It was a bit too thick, but I kept mixing the water in and ended up with the consistency I was after. What I'm aiming to do here is to create a bit of a soft transition in those greens. So by providing something that is just slightly offset, slightly more washed out, and by glazing that over the top of the darker green, I'm hoping to give an end result of a slow transition of color from the lighter areas that would quite naturally get hit with light from above, let's say, versus areas further down the side. We can see here on the Scorpec destroyers that I'm doing the same thing, but picking out the outer edges of their shoulders. Um, once all said and done and dried, I do think this effect is slightly hard to see, unless under pretty good lighting, to be fair. However, I do overall actually really like the way that this kind of settled as a nice little sort of color transition. I'm not sure I would recommend spending the amount of time that I did on this step, given the fact that you've got to be under pretty ideal lighting to do it. At this juncture, I'm still doing that here, and you can kind of see this process close up. Uh, a couple of problems with focusing the camera here. Um, lessons to be learned for sure. But all the same, you can kind of vaguely see what I'm going for, that it's just lifting the edges just ever so slightly and giving a bit of interest to those greens here and there. As I was working through this process, and given that I had a third green to try in the moot green, I thought I would set myself a bit of a challenge and attempt to do some edge highlights over the top. You can see this beginning here. Um, I just tried in a couple of places on these smaller models and ended up really happy with the results, trying deliberately to keep to the edge of panels, things that are easier than that. But the real test for these greens was always gonna be the larger models. So once I was kind of happy with what it looked like on a smaller model, I really needed to tackle this on something larger to give myself that space to properly evaluate what this looks like. Now we can see here one of the problems that we're gonna have with the larger models, which is because that original green is so dark, it takes a great number of layers over the top. Now, these, this layer in particular, I think was slightly over thinned but nonetheless, it took quite a number of layers to really build up the correct color of that original warpstone green base. As we're working up through it, you can see that the warpstone green is beginning to tint the model as we go. And I'm deliberately trying to be very careful to capture all of the different parts of this very, very complicated piece. Um, here we can see me going over in a much later stage and we can see that the green is really starting to come through and that the end effect is starting to present itself. It's led to quite a, um, and I mean this in a good way, almost like a plasticky cover that I really like um, in a way that it's, it looks quite manufactured, it feels quite Necron somehow. Um, I really, really like this. And we can see that we had to use quite a lot of paint actually to get through this, although it's all um, watered down. And so actually we've not really lost any detail on these models, which is really good to see. And going through, we're starting to get that real matte color that we're after. And we can see that we're working through all the different models and it is just creating that end effect. Something that looks like it's regularly internally repaired or something like that. Um, honestly, I'm really happy with this effect. Um, as it goes through. But you're seeing as I'm layering here that I'm having to tackle it from one side of a panel to the other and then 
turning the model around and doing the same thing just to make sure that I don't cross over any of those elements that have already been coloured quite nicely. Now we can see me just reviewing one of those models as that base coat is finished. I think that does give you a proper sense of what we're after. At this juncture, same as before, I decided to begin the edge highlights. I've actually jumped slightly further forwards so you can see um, the some of the edge highlights had already really been done on this model but I just wanted to work through it slowly but surely. I really wanted to kind of set myself a bit of a challenge here, something that I would never would have normally done. I normally would have skipped this step or not even bothered with it in its entirety. So I decided to pick out all of those lines and give it a real shot. And this uh, moot green, again, I hate GW naming. It's not very clear. It's a lighter sort of um, a more washed out green presents a really nice highlight colour over that sort of warpstone war boss blend that ended up being the base of lots of these panels. I deliberately didn't tackle any section that was too heavily obscured, so you can see that I will move around other elements quite liberally and be quite willing not to do all sections of a panel. I'm just trying to tackle those bits which will be the most visually obvious. Uh, particularly when on the tabletop, the aim here really is to provide something visually interesting um, and not go too much further. Another interesting thing about these models is due to their size and sort of shape and complexity as well, the typical tricks that you get given for creating a, a steady environment for something like this really don't work. It's not possible to create that at like Eiffel Tower, I think it's sometimes called, where you sort of put both elbows on the table and lean your hands into each other and then hold the model and the paintbrush at the same time. It's really not possible to do that with a model of this size. So instead of using my arms, what I'm actually doing is resting my wrists right on the table because the table will be steady and then just using that as a base to slowly but surely move it around, which is why you can see me repositioning the model quite a lot to get into some of the areas here. Because this moot green is quite a light color, it did take quite a few times going over the different sections to create some punch. This ended up being more useful because in a few places where I had made mistakes that I couldn't smudge out so easily, those mistakes really aren't that visually obvious in the end product and I really quite like the end effect. I can show you the models just with that green. We can see already that we're kind of moving in the right direction here. We've got something I think slightly more visually obvious. It's really clear that that green is a nice finish where that wasn't so clear before. Um, and we've got a really nice base to move on to our second stage. So once I'd reviewed the models a bit and had some initial looks, I picked out that Vallejo light blue and started tackling these panels. So we're just really going with the rib cages here, same as on the Immortals from the last episode. We're not going to tackle anything more than that. The aim of the game really is just providing that visual interest. If we go overboard here, we could end up really overdoing it. So I'm just trying to tackle units really slowly. You can see how close my head was to the model. Note to self for future. Uh, when recording, put camera in a place, head will not uh, obscure camera, but never mind. We can see that I'm getting really far in there and being really delicate. The really small brush as well as I'm going through these models because there was a lot of very tight angles. But taking it slowly but surely, picking the point at which the blue will transition to a metallic or to the green is really clear. For some of the larger models, instead of properly diving in, I decided to just use it as a bit of an accent colour. So I picked a few places on these kind of long crooked legs. These ones in particular required quite a number of coats to get a nice clear effect over it. Whereas some of the smaller sort of rib cage elements on some of the units were much, much quicker, maybe two coats. That's all, obviously all paints are thinned, but here we can see me slowly working through it. I end up really, really liking this as just a bit of visual difference. 
It also fits that tank unit that I showed off in the last episode as that was on the kind of the arms and here we've got this on these kind of leg elements. So here on the rates I'm doing the same thing, just picking out those arms. But what you can see here is actually the highlighting step. Because I couldn't go over these sections with the contrast, what I decided to do is pick that light blue, mix some white in, and just very carefully go over some of the protruding edges to provide that visual interest. Moving on to the models with the rib cages, same as before, we're just using that contrast paint and we're just letting that contrast paint do what it does best. Do the shading, provide all of those benefits, So looking at the end effect altogether, I have to say I'm actually really quite happy with everything. I think the army looks like a solid, cohesive whole now, and we can also see that that green colour, although it's different from the one before, is really starting to come into its own. I think despite my initial problems, or shall I say prejudice, against GW's paint range, I have to give them credit that these three paints have been really, really good to use. I found them really quite fun and I really like the matter of fact they end up with. Despite my better judgement, I think I might be looking into some other GW paints in the future on top of their contrast ones because I have really enjoyed using these. So yeah, next time we will seek to probably do the other half, which will mostly be warrior units and some scarabs. But until then, thank you for watching and keep safe out there.